always thought feminism was a white woman's thing. That suffrage wasn't a fight fought for me. I thought that marriage, kids, a big house, and a white fence was a happily ever after only sold to black girls. Why is it that I should only speak when spoken to? Why is it that a man should be the head of my household? And politics, what is that if you're not a man? Because these ideals have been taught to me, preached to me, a woman, a black woman, told to me that black issues surpass women issues. But in 1851, color wasn't a divide when Sojourner Truth asked, ain't I a woman? Aren't I? What issues divide me from feminism? Because we have all been taught that our worth comes from what is between our legs. We all see the objectification of women today. And you're telling me that I can't want to change that because of the color of my skin? You're telling me that feminism is a white woman's thing. That suffrage wasn't a fight fought for me. You're telling me feminism doesn't apply to me. But last time I checked, I am a woman with the power to heal boo-boos with kisses to hold the weight of a baby in my belly, and teach love and strength to a nation starting from my breast. Last time I checked, I am a woman, and the color of my skin does not determine the power of my fight. Last time I checked, oppression had no color, and the fight to end it doesn't either. There's no color to change, no color to need, no color to freedom. I am a feminist. I'm a feminist. I'm a feminist. I am a feminist with melanin. And the color of my skin does not determine the power of my fight. Because ain't I a woman? I am a woman. I am a black woman. I am a feminist. After 72 years of protest, we won the vote. But the race isn't over. I'm just getting started. I fought for my rights. They weren't handed or granted. I will fight for what I believe in. I want to make a difference in this world. And if I don't like what is around me, I now have the ability to change that. So why does it seem that the man still decides my future, my rights, the way I want to live my life? I was birthed by a woman. Men are birthed by a woman. Never was I brought up by a man. The man never taught me to respect myself, to take care of my body. My mother taught me. Woman taught me. But yet, instead of learning from each other and standing up for one another, they aren't seeing the contradiction from acknowledging our rights to vote but denying us full equality. Rather than it being a dialogue, it's a monologue. The man isn't talking with me, he is talking at me, telling me that I am enslaved and that I owe the man my life. Why is that? After 72 years of protest, we won the vote. But the race isn't over. I'm just getting started. I have a buddy who labels himself the blackest man on earth. Although it's always made me chuckle since he's lighter than me. <laughs> Nevertheless, this is his proclamation, and I adore his mind because it allows his mouth to cascade streams of intellect each time we converse or debate. There was this one time, however, when we were strolling through the Upper East Side exuding our Afrocentrism when he quipped, I would never sleep with a white woman because I'm afraid she stole my soul through my dick. <laughs> and I remember I nearly fell to the pavement in uncontrollable guffawing when I realized his joke is actually a statement. Yes. One time, the words inequality is inequality, no matter who it applies to, were spoken in a fluidity unmatched by any truth uttered before. My friend, a modern day Malcolm X in the shade of Bob Marley, has always disliked the fact that I subscribe to the feminist movement. Apparently, it is a campaign that my skin tone has made me ineligible for. However, if he is a Black Panther, then I am Angela Davis. <laughs> Feminism. The, the other F word.
Dousing my mouth in his sensuality is like tasting forbidden nectar. I receive far less flack for every fuck bomb I drop, but luckily I don't give any because <laughs> I like that I'm different. I enjoy my anomalous personality because it gives me the ability to say I am a feminist without a single spell of hesitance. I declare membership of such a movement because not a single female countenance adorns Mount Rushmore. I proclaim my title of feminist because my God has neither penis nor vulva. It is a gender neutral entity. And just like Elizabeth, I will talk to and connect with it on my own accord using a directness unparalleled by any prior evangelist. I am a feminist because I'll be damned if what is mine is now yours without the absence of the why not once ever crossing your mental for consideration. If black lives can matter, then why not the lives of those with vaginas as well? <laughs> I am a feminist because there is Cherokee in my bloodline and it was the Native American people that set the precedent for gender equality. I am a feminist because being a feminazi is counterproductive. <laughs> I am a feminist because I respect male identifying individuals but can praise those that view themselves as female. I am a feminist because it is simply a synonym for being a humanist. Yet above all, I am a feminist because I know my history and see how good intentions can be lost in the midst of politics. For those that do not agree, present me with your platform for peace. Because equality may seem like a dream, but so is the idea of an integrated society. We've come far, but the ideology of racial and gender divide has regressed our nation and sullied our minds. So yeah, I respect my friend and will listen to his opinion, but I know for a fact that Frederick Douglass was at that monumental convention. I love my pal and will grant his vocalization of blackness, but you can't revoke mine just because I follow the ideals of those that paved the path to my solidarity. Grace Fenderson, Fanny B, S. Truth, A. Davis, and the leader of my liberty, Elizabeth C. Stanton. <laughs>Most issues get solved by getting down to the root of it. There is nothing new to this. And we were brought into this world with our mother's screams. You see, we were born emotional beings. We make life by making love. And our guts carry kisses and strength and the power of creation. Why are emotions given a negative connotation? Why are we so often called too much, too crazy, too emotional? Since when did wanting to become a leader become bossy? Why are, my, I, are so often my opinions demeaned with, she must be PMSing? Why must my blood be constantly used against me? And I refuse to believe that the one thing that makes us human is bad. Because you see, it's our emotions that change things. It takes blood and sweat and tears to make history. It takes a declaration of sentiments to spark change. There is no mystery, and we need to be angry enough to make the pot boil before it can spill over. And no movement was ever won by avoiding confrontation, by tiptoeing, or with hesitation. It was won with feeling. We must fight with our stomachs and with our hearts. Because this world is too full of politicians and CEOs, too busy doing what's easy instead of doing what's right. And what's right can only be found in our guts. And if we listened to all the times we were called too emotional, we the people never would have included us. Business from the Declaration of Sentiments. He has endeavored in every way he could to destroy her confidence in her own power, to lessen her self-respect, and to make her willing to lead a dependent and abject life. Hey, sexy. <laughs> You're adorable. Hello, cutie. Smile beautiful. Elizabeth Cady Stanton once said that she would like women to regard themselves not as adjectives, but as nouns. I am a feminist. I am a leader. I am an activist. I am a woman. And we, we are, are here to, to take, take care, care of unfinished, unfinished business. business.
Hey guys, so my name is Tiff Roma. I am the director of what you just saw. Um, it was an ensemble devised piece that we've worked uh, together over the last month to create and the artists that you just saw were absolutely awesome and so excited to work on an amazing event like this. So on behalf of Girl Be Heard, we just want to thank all the organizers for making this night truly special and we want to stay connected with each and every one of you. So please look us up on girlbeheard.org. We have a gala coming up on December 3rd. Let's stay connected because together we're stronger. Thanks.